afternoon, everyone, and a very warm welcome to all of you from Ad Gali. In our sixth edition of the Thought Leadership Series, we are privileged to have Mr. Shiv Shiv Kumar, Group Executive President, Aditya Birla Group. Shiv Shiv Kumar, or Shiv as is popularly known, is one of India's longest-serving CEOs. He is currently the Group Executive President at Aditya Birla Group. He has worked across multiple categories and industries and has handled over 60 brands in his long-standing career. He was the CEO for Nokia in India and subsequently led the company's emerging market unit. He was also the chairman and CEO for PepsiCo South Asia. He is regarded as one of India's leading management and leadership thinkers and speaker. Joining Shiv Shiv Kumar will be Ash Sridhar who will be moderating today's session. Ash Sridhar is a leadership and innovation coach and partner of Ideas RS. He is also the former director of Ogilvy and Mather and was instrumental in launching the Ogilvy and Mather Direct in India. He is also the author of the book Unlock the Real Power of Ideation. So without taking any further time, let us now straight away move into this interesting conversation with our guest Shiv Shiv Kumar. Over to you Sridhar. Thank you Ganpati. Good morning Shiv. Absolutely delighted to see you after a long pleasure. time. Pleasure. Pleasure Sridhar. Long time no see. Absolutely. I have been your admirer from day 1. Okay. Today I am getting an opportunity to ask you question that I always wanted to ask you, but for some reason the other we never got around to doing that. Okay, the first thing is about many congratulations on your new book, The Right Choice. I see it is already on the bestseller list, and not a surprise, of course. Okay, so let me start with your relationship with Ram Charan. I mean, somebody I always admire, a true thought leader. How and when did it start your relationship with Ram Charan? Yes, so I was on a uh, general manager's course from Unilever at Four Acres, London, and Ram came and spent a week with us, and so I got to know him very well. Then that time he was consulting for GE, Coke, etc. So every evening I would make it a point to spend, you know, at least an hour with him after uh, you know the day was over, and really probe his brain and learn as much as I can. and so after that we just continued being friends and then he interviewed me for some of his books and then whenever he used to come to india we'd sit and have long discussions about the future of business etc and uh, in fact in 2012 uh, 13 i bumped into him in uh, dubai airport when i was running emerging markets okay and then he told me and that's what mentors can truly do he said shiv i think you're wasting your time in nokia nokia doesn't have a future i think it's time for you to move on you know just don't this he introduced me to a few people globally etc but i didn't want to go and take a global job and then again we reconnected now he's on the board of one of the abg companies so that's how i've known ram for uh, more than 20 years and it's been a very fruitful relationship i just did a session for with him for bitsong uh, the billa institute uh, uh, and school of management so it's always great fun to learn from him he's got such energy and such lovely ideas yeah and such clarity i mean that's it is uh, sort of Glaring in your eyes every time he says it, and then he said, "I I wish I had thought that like that." Right? Amazing. Mm-hmm. Okay, let me uh, ask you this question. You seem to be doing so many things, Shiv: reading, writing, speaking in various forums, holding various offices, professional bodies like the AMA. How do you manage your time? Yar? The, the secret is something you must share with us. <laughs> <laughs> There's no secret to managing time. The first thing is. uh you must always give your job 110% okay that's absolutely critical you okay. cannot participate in what i call co curricular or extra curricular activities by hurting your job that is a no no brilliant so to me in a day the job occupies the job the time the thought i have to give it 110% okay that's number one second is i have always believed that it's important for every professional to contribute back to society Okay. To contribute in some way or the other, so I've been on many IM boards. I've been on the Ahmedabad board. I was on the audit committee of IM Calcutta. I'm on the XLRI board. I'm on the XIMB board. I'm on the IM Udaipur board, etc. So education and business education is something that has always appealed to me. So I try and contribute my time there. Uh, the next thing is other aspects of industry. People will call you for you know to make speeches at various events, etc. If you are an industry leader, then you have to commit to that also. Okay. The way to manage your time, I always find, is two things, Shridhar. One is managing your dead time. 
dead time is time you are sitting in a car you are sitting in an aircraft most people tend to do nothing okay i tend to use that time well either i clear my mails or i read something or i write something whatever it is i tend to use a lot of my dead time okay both you know whether it is professional or personal the second thing about time management is having as few distractions as possible okay so one of the things the younger generation needs to know is to avoid distractions okay you know you're doing something you want to do something else you want to do something else you end up doing four things in one hour and none of them to even 50% level so if you really want to manage time well avoid distractions and finally when you manage your work well when you manage your discipline well those are what i call become repeatable habits or super habits then you tend to take lesser and lesser time for them over time and that really is a small time so yeah. it's a constant virtuous cycle you have to plan execute learn do it again and that's what helps you manage time that's okay. at least it's helped me see that that's all i can say fascinating so one thing that occurred to me as you were talking uh this thing about multitasking now is it really possible for somebody to multitask and be effective and efficient i have a major problem doing that i can't do it so you're right i think in a physical world it's very difficult you know okay. in a physical world for example if we are sitting in a meeting and yeah. somebody is chairing the meeting or you are chairing the hmm. meeting okay it's very difficult to multitask because everybody's eyes are on you yeah. on the other hand in a virtual world hmm. when 95% of the people have put the screen off they are listening to what is being said there are other things that you can do so okay. i personally believe multitasking has gone up in a virtual world as okay. opposed to a physical world so i mean uh, the 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 corollary to that has productivity also gone up in spite of all it has gone up. productivity has, has gone, gone up significantly in a virtual world because i think people have dedicated their time and completed tasks because you are no longer present in the same office or in yeah yeah in the same environment you have to collaborate horizontally and so you need to hand over to somebody else for somebody else to do a proper job so informally sls have come into place in most organizations in a virtual okay. world collaborate horizontally is a wonderful expression <laughs> yeah the other thing i admire about you is the way you maintain relationship shiv we have known each other for almost 22 years as far as i remember from your uni labor days and i used to be in the apj house office I and when i started there uh, how yeah. what is the secret of your ability to maintain relationship with the same kind of uh, intensity if i might want to use the ex- expression yeah i i think it's very important sri that when you define your circle the family is a given right and over there to parents siblings yeah. Yeah. Uh, kids wife etc that's a given you maintain close relationships with people mm. second bunch of people you tend to have close relationships with is your classmates some right. classmates over right. time etc right. third right. bunch of people you tend to have close relationships with is people you work with colleagues ex colleagues etc very rarely do people have a broader interest in industry people and people who never worked with them or are not part of their family right so my simple you know philosophy is that you must keep in touch with friends and you must always you know reply to them i tend to reply to every sms every whatsapp every email i get yeah okay I, that's my I basic don't. philosophy right unless of course i feel that the other person is taking advantage of me or pushing me in the wrong direction <clears throat> then i say okay. hey you know not enough let's you know let's say the second yeah. thing i committed to myself was whether it's a classmate or anybody who's worked for me if they call me for an event for their company or something to do with their family i always say yes i always prioritize that because i believe if you don't invest in your friends and you don't invest in people who have given you something when you are running that company then i don't think you are treating them well okay right, right. that's the second one the third one is when you build friendships a lot of people unfortunately today shida want to build friendships if they see a benefit from the other person uh, and i have never looked at it that way ever i have right. always assumed best intent i've tried to help as many people as i can if my time and my commitment manages it okay you should be in a friendship not expecting anything if you get something back it's positive it's a bonus but you should be in the friendship for because you like the person and not because you want something from that person so that's how i, I look at it 
and i'm lucky that i have a lot of good friends like you <laughs> i think i was trying to understand how how do you manage the art of not saying no one still manage all your time today i got some very interesting insights from you thanks for that so let me come to thought leadership what exactly is thought leadership because everybody talks about it when you ask them saying but can you define what it is and they then sort of uh, dancing around so how do you define thought leadership how do you recognize a thought leader and what makes them different yeah thought leadership very simply stated shridhar is deep expertise or uh, in a field that's all as simple as that okay you are a thought leader in the direct marketing space you know uh, as simple as that you knew more about the topic than most of the people you were the go to person for that you had ideas for that you looked at the past you calibrated the present and forecasted the future that's what thought leaders are about they are the go to person on that particular topic or whatever it is so a good thought leader has that element at his or her core they are able to look at the future okay they just don't necessarily come at it from the past and i've always found that thought leaders have very good insights they are able to offer you something else okay they are able to connect 2 plus 2 and give you something more than 4 and they are able to make you think differently about either the situation or the problem or the context whatever it is so let me give you some examples of thought leaders yeah. from the past right let's take somebody like uh, john f kennedy mm. john f kennedy in the 1960 said we will put a man on the moon bring right. him back safely okay to earth now he was not a scientist right he was not a space engineer but he put that thought into americans and the whole world and that spurred a huge lot of innovation etc in nasa and sure enough 1969 10 years later they did that so was john f kennedy a thought leader for america and the space program almost certainly yes was he a rocket scientist no so that's one point martin luther king today we talk of inclusion and equality look at that famous speech of martin luther king that one day my children will break bread yeah. Yeah, at the table yeah. with white kids you know nobody can say that better today compared to 50 years ago so martin luther king was an absolute thought leader in the area of race in the area of equality in the area of inclusion 50 years before his time okay mk gandhi was a thought leader in terms of taking ahimsa to a completely new level to saying look i don't want to fight somebody physically i will fight him intellectually with what is available at my disposal and i will reject what he says or does which does not serve my country then you take jack welch was a very successful thought leader i think a number of the you know organization innovations and discussions we've had over the last 25 years or something or the other to jack welch i think he was a phenomenal th- thought leader peter drucker was an outstanding thought leader he started in austria didn't want to be working in an organization or a ceo and then went on to be one of the most successful consultants the whole issue of managing an organization like an orchestra a matrix organization is a drucker idea absolutely you as a drucker concept sbu or a profit center concept is a drucker concept span of control is a drucker concept so they give you new concepts to think about okay that's what thought leaders do ram charan who we discussed uh, has been a thought leader robert mcnamara okay ford motor company the world bank president kennedy is uh, you know the secretary of uh, defense another thought leader so uh, the list can go on i would say thought leaders tend to exhibit broader interest they have a futuristic ability they have an ab- ability to energize you with their thoughts so that's what i would say is uh, a good thought leader in my book as you are describing all of these personalities who i i mean i've been admiring i i found two or three commonalities one thing was they are all dreamers right and they also dreamt about things that were that seemed impossible at the time when they dreamt it impossible didn't stop them right so i mean that's an amazing way that you explain thought leaders so who are the thought leaders you admire from india and abroad any field and why oh, let's yeah. look at all kinds of fields even beyond business absolutely right uh, th- thank you for that question uh, that's a great question so if i look at thought leaders uh, today in india and abroad uh, let's say cricket is a passion with india right uh, my very good friend harsha bogle is a great thought leader you right. know he started in advertising went to radio today television 
okay he has understood the nuance of cricket and where cricket is headed he has yeah. understood the nuance of digital entertainment and digital commentary okay so harsha bogel is a true thought leader and every conversation i have with harsha and anita is such a pleasure uh, every time i listen to them and uh, converse with them uh, tk arun ex editor of uh, times of india right. now he writes uh, on his own okay uh, for the F- uh, federal another outstanding thought leader you know uh, tk arun i have spent many you know conversations with him he can talk on any topic from politics to business to you know economics he is an outstanding thought leader and i follow him regularly i think piyush pandey in advertising is a wonderful thought leader see over 30 years how he has kept himself relevant to the latest consumer segment yeah. and the latest trends in advertising so piyush has done a great job of that yeah so one point i definitely want to make to you uh, which i see uh, shridhar is that title doesn't make a thought leader ah a lot of ceos think that just because they have a title they become a thought leader never ever yeah brilliant absolutely brilliant this world if i were to look outside the country somebody like adam grant okay outstanding thought leader on leadership on psychology on organization structures and behavior uh, simon sinek okay another great uh, thought leader byron shaw in marketing okay steve jobs bill gates uh, entertainment has had many many thought leaders because the basis of entertainment is constantly to change and challenge right. yourself right business right. does not have so many thought leaders because most business ceos and leaders think of incremental gains they don't think of fundamental pivots whereas in the entertainment business you need to think of fundamental pivots otherwise you lose an audience every generation virtually so great entertainment brands who have been thought leaders the beatles have been outstanding thought leaders even today they are the most popular their music is so popular and you know they really captured the imagination in india close our home amitabh bachchan is a fantastic thought leader look at where he started and where he is today he's just yeah. amazing you know so these are the thought leaders in my book both in india and abroad so as you are describing all the thought leaders abroad as well as in india uh, one thought that occurred to me is that thought leaders are not afraid of risk is that right yeah so the way i look at it is risk and opportunity are two sides of the same coin okay. and risk has a probability attached with it always remember that okay. something can be 1% risky taking a flight is 0.02% risky okay but every time you take a flight it's amazing everybody will wish you safe flight okay <laughs> now on the other hand betting on the cryptocurrency is a 95% risk today but people still take it <laughs> so the appetite for risk is determined by your outlook to risk and challenge some people take it some people don't so do thought leaders tend to take more risks than the normal people i would say thought leaders by the definition when they look at the future they are predicting something which might happen might not happen but i would say a good thought leader is one who gets about 60 70% right he won't get everything right but he will get about 60 right and the other side is that the failure never stops them it cannot stop you if you are a thought leader you are imagining the future so you encounter it you take it off i think a very good example of that is ck pralad outstanding thought leader the bottom of the pyramid was the last big concept in my book from an outstanding teacher uh, yeah. i knew him well too and uh, ck started his own company and he failed and when somebody asked him look you are an outstanding consultant why did you fail he said look i am a thought leader but running of a business requires blocking and tackling which i was not good at right and hence i failed there and it's better to wind it up which was praja okay so he recognized where his strengths were and he avoided and he was uh, fair enough in fact a fourth right enough to actually say it in so many words to people i mean so he didn't hedge the issue absolutely right? so who are the thought leaders around us today that people you admire not from the distant past I mean people who are their current uh, modern day that's thought leaders in india and abroad that's what i just gave you the list harsha tk yeah. arun piyush yeah. adam grant simon sinek byron sharp uh steve jobs bill gates and even in our current situation you know somebody like clayton christensen was a thought leader okay uh, definitely i think uh, tarun kanna from uh, uh, harvard business school uh, pankaj gemawat harbir singh okay uh, professors tend to be good thought leaders is my okay. opinion because they look ahead okay 
that, that that's their that's their uh, profession uh, to Absolutely. think that's their profession to gaze the future and so on yeah. and so forth and predict it. yes any tips on how one can become a thought leader i mean uh, do these people consciously say i want to become a thought leader or just start and then they happen to become a thought leader what is the way it happens it is like this you know yeah you can't be a thought leader if you don't have followers right somebody must follow you <laughs> <laughs> you know what you are a thought leader in this i want to follow you so a thought leader in my book has to be known for something you know in brands we say the core what's the core of the brand right what do you stand for right okay what do you promise mm. so like that a thought leader has to be a go to person for something okay he has to have a point of view about that second is there's no point in being a thought leader and being in a closet you need to be available right yeah there's no point in saying you know i, I have great thoughts but i will put it in my room and you know in my cupboard that doesn't work if you want a thought leader you want followers then you need to be out there you need to be available i think uh, a very important distinction i'd like to make is that your thought leadership must be independent of your company so for hmm. example you know i should be a thought leader independent of my role in a company if i am seen as a thought leader just because i am a marketing manager in hindustan unilever or procter and gamble that is wrong which is what i said it doesn't come with title i have to have my own savviness to say this guy is damn good irrespective of the title okay so when i speak i never quote examples from my company ever and okay. right through for 25 30 years never ever because if you do that then you're leaning on your company and what it offers you your skill as a thought leader is in being able to take other examples and quote to people how you see that that is where the value is okay so some of the things which have worked for me as thought leadership is as follows one i'm always available to speak to communicate to give my thoughts where i believe i can add value and if i have the time number 1 number 2 i never sponsor any event where i speak my company has never sponsored an event where i speak right so people will write in and say hey you know what there's somebody who wrote in and say hey you know what we'll give you a keynote opening keynote if your company sponsors i told poonam call in nokia answer is no i will speak if there's no monetary stuff involved okay yeah. number one. okay i never do panels Poonam Kaul, who was my head of comms both in Nokia and PepsiCo, she worked for me for twelve, thirteen years. Outstanding lady. She said, "Shiv, you tend to prepare a lot, and when you go on a panel, you get, you know, five sentences, ten sentences. Most of the ninety-nine percent of the panels are underprepared. They're just talking at the top of the hat. It's a waste of your time." Yeah. She was able to see that, and I said, "I absolutely agree with you. I don't <laughs> do panels unless, of course, that's absolutely essential." Uh, for the government or something like that otherwise i never do panels okay next i you know i have never paid to speak in my life i never pay full stop there are absolutely. so many people who you know who will pay i never do that absolutely right. never and lastly i have never paid for any award if people write in and say hey you know we want to give you this award <laughs> you know 50000 i said thank I know. you no correct so you have to maintain a set of principles when you are a thought leader Absolutely. So if I accept the speaking engagement or an interview engagement like this, I tend to prepare thoroughly and I land up there to provide value to my consumer or customer. I treat them with respect. Okay, you cannot be a thought leader if you take your audience for granted. Absolutely. Johan Emanuel said, and somebody asked him, "Why do you practice?" He said, "If I don't practice for a day, I notice it. If I don't practice for two three days, the critics notice it. If I don't practice for a week, the audience notices it." <laughs> I once heard Vijay Singh, the famous golfer. He practices a lot, morning before the round, afternoon after the round. At the British Open, golf. Somebody asked him, "Why do you practice so hard?" He turned the club, pointed to the entrance, and said, "You know what? People pay their hard-earned money to come and watch me play. I don't want to let them down." Right. So what you have to stay committed. Yeah. To your audience, if you want to be a thought leader. Right. So uh, two things uh, I heard you say is that. uh wanting to be a thought leader is a self motivated kind of i don't i i'm not saying that i want to become a thought leader but i want to become an expert in something 
and uh, and then you know share whatever i know about that very generously with people that is one characteristic of a thought leader the other thing is that is it possible for you to groom thought leaders is it has has that happened yes that's a very good question you groom thought leaders by what i call structural thinking a uh, very good question i am sure you know him rishi bhattacharya who used to be the marketing director yes, in the yes. was I very remember. very good at that hmm. when you sat in a meeting with rishi he would ask you the structural questions where is this industry headed 5 years from now what role will your brand have how will profit pools look in this industry how will segments look in this industry so right. you know when somebody asks you those deep probing questions then automatically your game improves so one of the rules for good leaders is to challenge people to think at a higher level and right. challenge people to think differently there is sameness in a number of people thinking the yes. sameness in industry today the strategy in most companies is similar it's only execution yes. which is different correct so you have to impinge on thinking if you want to develop thought leaders and you have to raise the bar you have to raise the bar mr gopal krishnan who was my boss was another person like that he would challenge you to think different yeah any tips on how one can become a thought leader are you the sub partly you already answered it but is that a conscious effort I on the first i think you need to part? have a broad you need to have a broad range of interests you need to be well read you need to be able to make the connections with the various dots okay and you should look beyond your industry okay you cannot be a genuine thought leader if you are only confined to your industry okay jack wells contribution was well beyond this, the conglomerate yeah. he ran or the industry he ran ram charans is much wider than where he is today right. he is talking about amazon in the past he talked about ge in the past he talked about coca cola you know right. he covers a wide range and spectrum and he stays relevant to the times and is projecting ahead of time yeah. you know so that's how you you become a thought leader uh, more important i think you need to be able to communicate succinctly right okay uh, and hit the nail on the head which is what people take out because in today's rushed world people want what i call condensed information capsules that's right one short bite stuck or in and out correct. correct that's what i mean. so 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 the other thing that i'm getting from you is like thought leader is thought leadership is an outcome is not a destination you can never plan that you can yeah. never ever plan you cannot say i want to be a thought leader yeah you take uh, for example uh, uh, the cricket world today yeah. okay there are some outstanding cricketers who are not thought leaders but there are some cricketers who change the destiny of their their cricket nation or cricket itself you know so yeah you have different sets of people so the last thing that i want to come i was i was looking at your website recently i actually full of admiration for this uh what might have been the brief you gave the web designer <laughs> good question so as we developed this website uh, a girl called divya karnal was the person who set up the website for me yeah okay, and she did a very good job uh, very one nice. of the thing yeah mm -hmm. and uh, my wife gave some inputs uh, hamsni in the early days after that one of the things i did was as the website was getting developed i mm. sent it to a number of my friends who i knew would be critical uh -huh. who would say hey this doesn't work this is bad this color combination is bad this font is bad the friction is high etc so there's arti kelchikar who's an author in singapore she's pretty you know absolutely ruthless in commenting mm. then there was anusha from autumn karan amina etc now as i sent it to my friends who have named a few of them and they gave me feedback this is what they said they said shiv your website must reflect you and the characteristics we we would expect in your website are for it to be simple mm. free flowing low friction transparent honest bright and not dull they said look those are the words which we would use to describe you and that's what should be in your website right that's the brand okay so i went by that but i genuinely asked for really honest and tough feedback from people who knew they would tell me the truth because they wanted my best interest yes yes so they were happy to tell you what they felt rather than what believed uh, what 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 I might be pleasing uh, shiv that kind of stuff yeah right? anything else i should have asked shiv that i have not asked yet in this conversation which something i, I didn't think know you could have asked me what am i afraid of i'm afraid of flying even though i take two flights a day <laughs> two flights a week sorry <laughs> okay 
my dad passed away in an air accident and after that i you know i've read how do how do i counter it i've read everything about flights and air disasters for the last 50 years so i can tell you what a pilot will do before he does it <laughs> so it's a reflex <laughs> mechanism <laughs> i track the weather pattern before i fly if i'm flying long distance to see where the weather pattern is to see whether i will go through turbulence or bumps on the flight so i prepare myself for it you touched upon a very important issue called fear uh, do thought leadership uh, thought leaders entertain any kind of fear in the way in which they go about things or is there something very, that very good question. Face them very good question i said this to you know uh, aparna piramal raja i think uh, in an interview in sometime about 5 6 years ago the biggest fear I, she asked me what do you have as a fear as a manager i said my biggest fear is to stay relevant the day i am irrelevant i am not needed so the challenge for every thought leader is to stay relevant many thought leaders like amitabh bachchan has stayed relevant right even today yeah starting yeah. his career in the 1970s yes he still a force to reckon with would anybody else following him have the same thing the answer is no ram charan has stayed relevant even today okay gandhi is relevant even today right so the ability to stay relevant at that point of time is the biggest challenge to thought leadership so, so when leaders yeah because of that title start giving you examples of what they did 10 years ago they're yeah, clearly yeah. irrelevant and people in the room especially the millennials they start rolling their eyes they say hey this guy's lost yeah we don't care what he did in hindustan leave at 10 years so who's bothered the world is different today yeah yeah so staying relevant i think is the biggest fear for any thought leader so what is the, what does it take to be relevant that's a very important thing right i think the world is changing the context of the world is changing so understanding the changing world the changing context understanding the changing nature of your audience say in the past you could go and talk at an event for half an hour or 45 minutes and speak eloquently today you might have 10 minutes people are distracted people are on their phones if you're not able to catch their attention you can speak for 5 minutes you can speak for 5 hours they won't listen to you so understanding the context and giving them something of value which they say hey you know what this guy made me think differently about the same thing you know i think uh, pushing that boundary i think is what uh, makes it so what are some of the things that you might be doing at a personal level to stay relevant i speak to people from uh, number one i travel a lot okay okay i travel to the market continuously uh, i can assure you i know more about most brands and how they're doing in the marketplace than most companies brand managers or marketing managers or ceos because mm. every time i go to the outlet i ask about various categories i ask the retailer which innovations are new okay which innovation is working which innovation is failing why is it failing please tell me why i engage with a lot of entrepreneurs and ask them how things are going they give me a different sense i talk to people from outside my industry and i try to stay abreast by reading books about the future there's a lovely book i'm reading right now about artificial intelligence uh, oh. read, uh, written by eric schmidt and henry kissinger on the future kissinger is relevant even in today's world yeah. people talk to him about what america should be doing about uh, afghanistan okay so that's how i try to stay relevant so in, in your current role uh, uh, i mean the outside world might perceive it as a head office kind of role right um so how do you maintain this being in touch with the market being in touch with customers being in touch with the various segments and so on how yeah. that so you see uh, the thing about roles sashida that's a good question again you ask you should never define the role by the job description you have okay brilliant job description is there to match you to that that's more yes a role is what you do how you define it yourself right okay if you say i'm going to take a broader stab at this rather than just giving advice i will actually be practical about it rather than giving theoretical advice okay. and i'll back that practical advice with real life examples and data then you will have a different role okay so don't be constrained by the job description is what i would tell everybody thought leaders are never dis, you know confined by the descriptions of a you know job ever that's okay. why they are thought leaders one last question if you permit me i think you are so passionate about everything that you are doing and you are talking about and you are speaking about what is the connection between passion and thought leadership uh, i think both flow into each other if you are here's the thing if you are not passionate about something you'll never do it number one number two if you are not passionate about something others will notice it <laughs> others will notice it very easily 
yeah. you can't fake it you can't fake right. passion right so again i go back go to the core of who who you are and invest energy and time in that because life is too short don't waste your time over 20 things which add no value to anybody in you know in the world focus on a few things and say hey you know i want to add value to this and i will give it my very best the big advantage today shridhar is social media yeah okay you can be on linkedin you can be on instagram you can be on twitter you can get followership based on where you are headed you know so you have the platform which in the old days if you went back 50 years the only platform for your thought leadership believe it or not was the soap box in hyde park okay that's it that was the equivalent of thought leadership right social right, platform right, you right. stood on a soap box and you told the world what you thought about on a sunny afternoon in hyde park today you can tell people anything you want okay but i find that people have deteriorated they post pictures they post irrelevant stuff they post yeah. comments on sex on religion on yeah. all kinds of rubbish which they shouldn't you know and the whole journey seems to be to get likes and this and that which right. i think is irrelevant thought leaders yeah. don't bother about that that's right so the honest introspection it's a very important thing for the thought leader is that absolutely. right absolutely yeah okay shiv i i can go on i i get so excited when i see you talk to you but i think we have more or less uh, arrived at the closure time i can't thank you enough for what you have done for us and for the way you carried on the conversation i it's like old times where we have had conversations in the past right i am absolutely delighted absolutely grateful look forward to being in touch with you regularly as offer thank, thank you, you so much for everything you have done through my career you know you have always been a huge support you are one of the first guys who predicted that i would be a ceo thank you for that <laughs> Thanks you from all the best. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thanks. Bye again. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye everybody at Agile. Have a great day. Bye. Thank you.